Hello, welcome to our presentation on unintentional falls and traumatic brain injuries in North Carolina. In this presentation, we will be sharing death certificate and hospital discharge data from the North Carolina State Center for Health Statistics, as well as emergency department data from NC Detect to describe the burden of unintentional falls in the state and how these injuries interact with traumatic brain injuries. The next three slides are related to our technical notes document which includes the definitions used to identify falls and TBI injuries in each of our data sources. We rely on the CSTE toolkit to identify cases based on ICD-10 codes. There has been a shift in methodology from previous years to pull out any mention of any injury in the hospital discharge and ED visit data. This helps us identify more injuries that may be present within a single record and better understand the burden of injury in the state. For more information, please view the technical notes document linked on the slide. This slide shows us a table with some of the codes that we use to identify unintentional falls. Similarly, this slide shows the codes that we use to identify traumatic brain injuries. All of these codes are listed in full detail in the technical notes document, which is linked in the slides. The population in North Carolina is aging. It's important to note that the populations most at risk of falls are projected to have the fastest growth over the next 20 years. On this slide, we can see the projected estimates of population growth in North Carolina. The first column shows the estimated 2019 North Carolina population by age group. The gray column in the middle is the projected estimated population for 2039. The last column on the right in green shows the percent change in population over the next 20 years. This data shows us an overall increase in the state population of 23%, with the largest increases in populations of concern for injury topics such as falls and traumatic brain injuries. Population data shows us that most older adults in North Carolina are non-Hispanic white. This is important to note as it impacts many of the trends that we will see in falls and TBI data later in the presentation. We also looked at some additional demographic characteristics that may be related to unintentional falls. From this chart, we see that 35% of older adults in North Carolina have a disability, which may increase their risk of fall. We also have a high percentage of veterans in our state, with 18% of older adults identifying as having served. These groups are often more likely to experience falls or traumatic brain injuries. Further, 42% of housing units with people over 65 are single person households. This is important as an older adult left alone after a fall may have more serious outcomes if there isn't someone there to find them. Of the population of older adults with a disability in North Carolina, we see that the most common type is an ambulatory disability. This factor further increases an individual's risk for falling. This slide shows the proportion of older adults that have a chronic disease. Close to 80% of the older population in North Carolina identifies as having one or more chronic conditions. Further, we see over 50% of older adults identify as having two or more chronic diseases. Having multiple chronic conditions is a known risk factor for falling. Another source that we can use to study falls in addition to our death, hospital, and ED data is the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System Survey. BRFSS is a survey of adults that is conducted to understand health behaviors and outcomes. BRFSS contains a question about falls within the last 12 months and here we report these results for 2018 as a breakdown by demographic group. Overall, 13% of participants reported having two or more falls within the last 12 months. There were some disparities among demographic groups and the blue bars indicate a group that had a proportion higher than the overall average. As you can see, the proportion having experienced these falls was higher among women, older adults, those with less than a high school education, those with a disability, those with lower income, and veterans. We know that between 2016 and 2019, there were just over 5,000 fall-related deaths. However, deaths are only the tip of the iceberg. With over 94,000 hospitalizations 
and 800,000 emergency department visits, the overall impact of unintentional falls is unknown. It's important to note that our data does not capture less severe falls or their impacts on lived experience, which hinders our ability to accurately estimate overall fall burden in North Carolina. We will now provide data for unintentional falls in North Carolina from 2016 to 2019, starting with deaths, then moving to hospitalizations and emergency department visits. Fall-related deaths have continued to increase over the last 10 years. As you can see on the slide, this trend represents over a 75% increase in the count of fall-related deaths, going from just shy of 900 deaths a year in 2010 to now almost 1,500 a year in 2019. This increase is important to note in combination with the aging population in our state. Unintentional falls were also noted to be the third leading cause of injury death in the state among all age groups, representing over 5,000 deaths in the four-year period. Only unintentional poisonings and motor vehicle traffic incidents accounted for a higher proportion of overall injury death. When looking at fall-related death rates by age group, we see that the highest burden is among older adults. Rates begin increasing at the 45 to 54-year-old age group and exponentially increase with age. Rates more than quadruple between the 75 to 84-year-old age group and those over 84. We can clearly note that older adults bear the largest burden of fall-related deaths. For the deaths between 2016 and 2019, we have calculated rates by demographic group for comparison. As you see on the slide, females have the largest burden of fall-related deaths, though closely are followed by males. When looking at the breakdown by race and ethnicity, we see that non-Hispanic whites have the largest burden. This group clearly bears a disproportionate burden of falls with a rate of 18 fall-related deaths per 100,000 persons. Falls and TBI have a clear linkage, with 44% of fall-related deaths having an association with a traumatic brain injury. Because falls are a leading mechanism for TBI deaths and TBI is a large outcome of unintentional falls, we wanted to examine rates of TBI among different age groups. This relationship is a focus of core injury work in the branch and preventing falls can help prevent TBI. Because of this association between falls and TBI, we will now explore trends in TBI by age group and demographic, starting with deaths. Similar to unintentional falls, the overall impact of traumatic brain injury in North Carolina is unknown. With any injury topic like TBI, we must note that deaths are only the tip of the injury iceberg. This slide gives you an idea in the difference in magnitude of the burden of TBI in the state compared to the burden of falls. Between 2016 and 2019, there were just over 8,000 deaths due to TBI and over 100,000 emergency department visits. This is smaller in magnitude compared to falls, which accounted for over 800,000 emergency department visits in the same time period. TBI deaths have continued to increase over the last 10 years. As you can see, this trend represents a 19% increase in the count of TBI deaths. We went from just shy of 1,800 a year in 2010 to now over 2,100 deaths a year in 2019. Mechanism and intent are important to understanding the cause of injury. Mechanism of injury describes the source of the injury. Intent describes whether the injury was inflicted purposefully, and if it was, whether it was inflicted by another person or self-inflicted. When studying the association between TBI and fall-related deaths, we can see that unintentional falls are the second leading cause of all TBI deaths, making up 28%. Self-inflicted firearm injuries accounted for the largest proportion at 33% of TBI deaths. These injuries are firearm suicides, and we see a higher proportion here in the death data due to the high fatality rate of firearm injuries, especially intentional firearm injuries. Motor vehicle traffic related incidents are the third most common mechanism and in intent, accounting for 20% of TBI deaths. 
When looking at TBI death rates by age, we see a similar trend to fall-related deaths in that the highest burden is among older adults. Rates begin to double at the 75 to 84 year old age group and almost triple when looking at the population of those over 84. Here, we specifically look at the intersection of fall-related deaths and traumatic brain injury deaths. With this data, we can see similar trends to what we saw with the burden of fall-related deaths in that there is the highest burden among older adults. Here, we can see that there is over a three-fold increase in rate with age starting at age 74 and continuing to increase exponentially with age. Continuing to look at the intersection of falls and traumatic brain injury, we also calculated rates of fall-related TBI death by demographic group to look at trends. The biggest difference we see when looking at fall-related TBI rates by demographic group compared to fall-related deaths is that there is a higher rate of death among males in this group. We can also note that non-Hispanic whites still carry the largest burden of the highest rates for fall-related TBI death. This map shows a breakdown of fall-related TBI death rate by county, with darker colors equating to higher rates of TBI death. The overall rate of fall-related TBI death among those 55 and older was 5.2 deaths per 100,000 residents from 2016 to 2019. This data is aggregated over four years to provide greater reliability and provide data for as many counties as possible. There are a handful of counties shown with hash marks, which represent suppression. In general, we suppress counties with less than five fall-related TBI deaths during the four-year period. This is due to the instability of rates based on small numbers. Moving on, we will now share some data on trends in fall-related hospitalizations. Fall-related hospitalizations have also continued to increase, though not as rapidly as deaths. For hospitalization and emergency department data, we are only able to provide data as far back as 2016. Due to the ICD-10 CM coding structure changes, we cannot directly compare to years prior to 2015. Even over the last four years, you can see that fall-related hospitalizations are trending upward with a 12% increase from just over 22,000 a year in 2016 to over 25,000 a year in 2019. When looking at fall-related hospitalization rates by age, we see that the highest burden is among older adults. Again, as we saw with the death data, rates begin to quickly increase with age, with the largest burden falling on those over 84 years old. For those 94,000 hospitalizations between 2016 and 2019, we have calculated rates by demographic group for comparison. As you see on the slide, similar to the trends that we saw with death data, females have the largest burden of hospitalizations, although there is a greater difference between the genders. When looking at a breakdown by race and ethnicity, we see that non-Hispanic whites still have the largest burden of fall-related hospitalization. However, they are closely followed by non-Hispanic American Indians and Alaskan Natives, who also have a disproportionately high rate of fall-related hospitalization. Continuing to look at the association between falls and traumatic brain injury, we will now explore TBI trends in hospitalizations. When looking at the mechanism and intent for TBI hospitalizations, we can see that unintentional falls make up over half of all TBI hospitalizations. We can also note that a majority, or almost 90%, of all TBI hospitalizations are unintentional when looking at intent alone. When looking at TBI hospitalization rates by age, we see that the highest burden is among older adults yet again. As we saw with the death data, Rates begin to quickly increase at the 75 to 84 year old age group and are highest among those over 84. This trend is similar to what we saw with fall related hospitalizations alone. We have calculated rates by demographic group for comparison. As you see on the slide, similar to the trends that we saw with the TBI death data, 
males have the largest burden of TBI hospitalization. When looking at the breakdown by race and ethnicity, we see that non-Hispanic whites have the largest burden of TBI hospitalization with a rate of almost 300 hospitalizations per 100,000 residents. Similarly, non-Hispanic Blacks and American Indian and Alaskan Natives have disproportionately high rates of TBI hospitalization as well. Similar to the previous map, here we see a breakdown of fall-related TBI hospitalization rate by county with darker colors equating to higher rates. The overall rate of fall-related TBI hospitalization among those 55 and older was 29.3 per 100,000 residents from 2016 to 2019. Again, this data is aggregated over four years to provide greater reliability. Some counties have been suppressed due to the instability of rates based on small numbers. Here, we see pockets of increased rate of fall-related TBI hospitalizations. These pockets fall mainly in Western North Carolina, but also in some of the coastal regions in the East. Now we will share some data on trends in fall-related emergency department visits from 2016 to 2019. Fall-related emergency department visits show a similar trend of steady increase. Even over the last four years, we can see that fall-related ED visits are trending upward with a 10% increase from just over 200,000 visits a year in 2016 to over 221,000 visits a year in 2019. When looking at fall-related emergency department visit rates by age, we see that the highest burden is yet again among older adults. As we saw with the death and hospital data, rates begin to quickly increase with age, with the largest burden falling on those over 84 years old, with a rate of 14,000 ED visits per 100,000 residents. Again, we have calculated rates by demographic group for comparison. As you see on the slide, Similar to the trends that we have seen throughout the presentation with fall-related injuries, females have the largest burden of fall-related emergency department visits. When looking at the breakdown by race and ethnicity, we see that non-Hispanic whites still have the largest burden of these ED visits and are closely followed by non-Hispanic Blacks who have a disproportionately high rate of fall-related emergency department visits as well. Continuing to look at the association between falls and traumatic brain injury, we will now explore traumatic brain injury trends in emergency department visits. When looking at the mechanism and intent for TBI ED visits, we see that unintentional falls make up close to half of all traumatic brain injury emergency department visits. This mechanism and intent makes up 41% of all visits. We can note that a majority or almost 87% of all TBI ED visits were unintentional when looking at intent alone. When we look at the traumatic brain injury ED visit rates by age, we see that the highest burden is among older adults, particularly those over 84. They have a disproportionately high rate of TBI ED visits at over 3,000 visits per 100,000 residents, compared to the lowest rate of less than 600 visits per 100,000 residents. However, this data shows us an interesting disproportionately high rate among those 15 to 19 years old. Similar to the previous map, here we see a breakdown of fall-related TBI ED visits by county. The overall rate of fall-related TBI ED visits among those 55 and older was 35.1 per 100,000 residents from 2016 to 2019. Again, this data is aggregated over four years to provide greater reliability and provide data for as many counties as possible. Only a few counties have been suppressed due to the instability of rates based on small numbers. This is due to the increased volume of ED visits compared to deaths and hospitalizations. Here we again see pockets of increased rate of fall-related TBI visits, mainly in the western part of the state. 
We can also use BRFSS data to study traumatic brain injury. BRFSS contains a question about loss of consciousness, and here we report these results for 2019 as a breakdown by demographic group. Overall, 26% of participants reported having ever experienced a loss of consciousness. There were some disparities among demographic groups, and blue bars represent groups with a higher proportion than the overall average. As you can see, the proportion having ever experienced a loss of consciousness was higher among men, middle-aged adults, those with less formal education, those with a disability, rural communities, and veterans. These trends are similar to the trends we saw among demographic groups for the BRFSS question about falls. Overall, in 2019, there were over 5,000 fall-related deaths, 95,000 hospitalizations, and nearly 850,000 emergency department visits. We also noted over 2,000 fall-related traumatic brain injury deaths, almost 15,000 fall-related traumatic brain injury hospitalizations, and close to 30,000 fall-related traumatic brain injury emergency department visits. This data is only the tip of the iceberg when estimating the overall impact of falls and traumatic brain injury on North Carolina and its residents. General trends and demographics across data sources show us that fall-related injuries occur most commonly among females and non-Hispanic whites. However, males are more frequently impacted by traumatic brain injury. We also note that rates of falls and TBI are both consistently highest among those 75 and older. This is concerning given the aging of the population in our state. Finally, most traumatic brain injuries are related to unintentional falls. From our data, we can see that most falls are associated with traumatic brain injuries and that a majority of traumatic brain injuries can be attributed to a mechanism of unintentional falls. This relationship is important to study as it can inform prevention and help to drive efforts to reduce the impacts of falls and TBI in our state. Here are a few links to some great prevention resources. Each of these groups have lots of great material on the risk factors associated with falls, as well as information about current prevention programs and strategies. Feel free to check out the linked websites for more information and access to these resources. Thank you for joining us for this presentation about unintentional falls and traumatic brain injury in North Carolina. If you have any questions, please either feel free to reach out to any of the contacts listed on the screen or visit our website at injuryfreenc.ncdhhs.gov. Thank you for joining us.